beginning of a day. Yesterday is a memory. Memory, something we remember in the present. The past is a memory. Really contemplate this so that memory is seen as an object rather than getting all caught up into memory, absorbing into memories. To see memory, remember something deliberately, some unpleasant thing that happens, an unpleasant memory, or think, try to think of the most, recall the, try to remember the most wonderful thing that ever happened, or the most horrible, but d- deliberate remembering. You begin to see memory much more objectively than when you when it just kind of goes on in your mind without, and you're just reacting to it. Pleasant memories come and you're happy, unpleasant memories come and you're depressed. That's how when mind just goes on and on and on with pleasant, unpleasant memories. When in investigation of Dhamma, looking into Dhamma, then we we take things and, and examine the, the memory, the worst thing that ever happened, or the best, you deliberately remember it, just to note it as something that arises and ceases in the mind. And tomorrow is the unknown. When you don't know something, what is your mind like? When the when your mind goes blank because you don't know the answer. What will happen tomorrow? Blank. Do you know that when the mind goes blank, when there's when there's no nothing in it? Stops the thinking because you the future is unknown. You start speculating, imagining, well, tomorrow this will happen, that will happen. But that is speculation, isn't it? You're filling the, the emptiness with some ideas from the past, possibilities of just being caught in the momentum of habits. So we assume that tomorrow all kinds of things will happen because of the momentum of habitual behavior and but but now we're just looking at what happens in the present moment here and now <laughs> not we don't know that's what you can honestly say about the future <coughs> at this moment is that you don't know there's no, there's not knowing of the future the future hasn't happened, so you can't know it. You can only know that you don't know. There's still knowing, isn't there? But knowing the way things are, rather than than guessing and speculating, and knowing about things. Now is the knowing. The body's here. There's this physical body made out of the solid element, the water, fire, and air. It's a planetary body. It belongs to the planet. It's, it, uh, you have to feed it with the things that grow on the earth. When it dies, it goes back to the to earth, fire, water, and air elements. It's under the force of gravity, so it has weight. 
it's substantial, it has weight, follows the laws of nature, of the planetary forces. And it's conscious, there's consciousness. So consciousness is what? We're using this consciousness now as a reflection rather than than just a, as a habit. We're not just we're just not just conscious out of habit, just going from habitual consciousness. We're actually looking, investigating, awakening to the nature of things. Because being in this separate form gives us this opportunity. Being born in this in a in a human form, with sensory, with sense organs, and caught in a sensory world, sensory planet, and we can reflect on it, we can study it, we can examine it, investigate it. Now, while contemplating the breath, there's a breathing of the body. There's the, just the, the feelings of the body, the sensations of weight, of touch, of pleasure, pain, heat and cold. You can observe the just the emotional feeling. There's the sense of anguish or despair or expectation or hoping, the kind of mood of the mind, that which is present, what you're kind of inclining toward. If you know, there's aversion, if there's fear. Just abide with that, with those feelings, with the, with the, with the mood of the mind, the way it is, and feeling depressed or elated or anguished or sorrowful or doubtful or uncertain, frightened, greedy, confused, deluded. <laughs> Sleepy, dull, restless. So that the the openness of mind, the embracing all these, the moods that are that are in the mind, by totally accepting them, by noting the, just the feeling of it, the mood of it, that's encompassing the whole thing, allowing it to be the way it is, so it can go away, it can burn itself out, it ceases. 
in the mind, rather than trying to get rid of it or follow it. Remember discovering this in in uh, in Thailand, where uh, us got into a very kind of dreary state of mind. Everything was just so kind of... uh, I was apathetic and depressed. Everything just seemed so endlessly wearisome and dreary. Living in northeast Thailand is so flat and hot and uh, everything turns brown. You're so enervating. You can, in the midday, you can hardly pick yourself up off the floor. And a kind of dreary apathy, depression, seem to just hang, hang on the mind all the time. No, all the attempts to kind of inspire and inspire the mind seemed to make it even worse. You see, the inspiration wasn't going to work anymore. It's trying to get inspired. And then just the total acceptance of the dreary, depressing feeling. rather than resisting and trying to get rid of it or bring it away from it and going right to it and totally accepting it abiding with it staying with it being completely with that feeling not not indulging is not indulging in it not believing in it but just totally accepting of it One felt a sense of relief. Of it. One didn't have to run away or do something or get rid of something. Or there wasn't taking it all personally or making it a, into a difficult problem or, or just sinking into apathy and kind of just wallowing in it. But there is this much more skillful embracing, encompassing, total acceptance of it. And it was completely bearable in itself when, when one totally accepted it. And being impermanent, of course, it goes, so then it's gone. And but it goes because of its karmic nature, not because of my desire. When it's time to go, it, it's gone. It reaches its end. Its karmic force has ended. Not because I want it to go anymore, but because I'm willing to let it be as it is so it can cease accordingly. It's a different attitude, isn't it? A wholly different attitude than the one, the annihilating one, the judgmental, impatient, critical thing going on in us it's I want to get rid of that I don't want it Uh, note also when as you let go of just getting and uh, stop reacting so much to conditions getting caught in them begin to be aware of the silence the natural silence of the mind the ringing kind of ringing silence 
like ringing in the ears. It's always present, except it's not seldom ever noticed. Uh, uh, like a high pitch of ringing, ringing sound or reverberating, the sound of silence is is natural, and it's continuous. It's constant. It's it's like the background of everything. Unlike the breath, the breath arises and ceases. But the sound of silence is continuous, doesn't, doesn't arise and cease, whether you pay attention to it or not, something else. Your attention to it comes and goes. Now, when you when you're with that sound of silence, the ringing sound, then your mind's very open; it's very receptive and very mindful, because you're not you're not fixed on any one thing. Because that sound of silence can is, is like a sign of an open, totally open mind. Where concentrating on the breath, you're, you're concentrating your mind on an object that is changing, that is that is uh, that arises and ceases, the inhalation, the exhalation. In order to contemplate your breath, say if you're talking to me, you're having a conversation with me, and then you think I have to watch my breath. You have to stop talking to me to watch your breath. You can't watch your breath and talk to me at the same time. So say, I'm saying something that's upsetting you. Something I said is really, really upsetting you. So I don't watch my breath. So you have to shut me off. Go to the breath. With the sound of silence, you can you can incorporate everything, include everything, so that it's like the background that one one is can notice the background as well as the 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 or the space as well as the uh, forms. For example, in this room, if I if I uh, if I just notice the forms in this room, I'm not aware of the space, am I? I'm just, okay, this person, there's Maytina, there's Robert, Douglas, Koyana Siri, go from one person to another, look at the curtains on the windows, look at the shrine, Adrian and Timon. I could do that the whole, whole hour, couldn't I? Just going from one thing to another without <coughs> noticing the space. But what is most obvious but most unnoticed in this room is the space in it. The people come and go. They're the objects. You can take the shrine out, you can take the curtains down, carpets, all the people can leave. You can take the walls down, the floor away. <laughs> the space is still here, and it's always been here, before the building was here. Uh, so the space, we think, the space is in the room, but actually the room is in the space. Now, to notice the space, we have to 
we can't just go from one object to another. We with we have to withdraw our attention from just uh, habitual wandering of going from one thing to another, and just open the mind to the space in the room. This is getting a perspective, isn't it? You're you're not judging. You're not admiring or criticizing the objects anymore. You just open the mind to so that the the mind is is spacious and all the objects are in perspective. They have perspective. They relate to each other in space. But if I if I don't do that then I can get obsessed with certain things like some somebody here maybe I'm very attracted to. I think, oh fantastic person. Absolutely fantastic. Totally infatuated. Lost in love. Can't think of anything else. Don't notice anyone else anymore. Just obsessed. Or I'm full of anger. That horrible person. So that I'm I'm just caught in, in an obsession of hatred. Dwelling on how much I don't like somebody. And then by doing that, I can forget all about the rest of you, not even notice that you're here. What? Anything else? Not to mention the space. Not when you're angry, you don't notice space at all, do you? You're just caught up in that bad feeling. You don't notice any other people. You're just obsessed with aversion towards one person. So that anger and greed, delusion, they blind us. We just become totally lost, blinded by them. We can't see. Or say if you're an interior decorator and you come into the into this meditation hall and critical mind starts operating. <laughs> Why do they ever get curtains like that? <laughs> Whoever chose those curtains must have been an idiot. <laughs> so every time you come into the room, you you think, oh, what horrible curtains. So that you don't, that's all you ever see. You see just one thing you don't like, and the mind just becomes obsessed with that one thing. But if you withdraw your attention from even the flaw or that which is attractive or repulsive, it's in perspective. You have, you have, you see, you see, because the, from a spacious mind rather than from a fixed view. So in the space, there's room for everything, for the beautiful, the ugly, how things relate, uh, how there's, uh, one isn't obsessed anymore with the objects. Because space itself doesn't have any quality to it that is repulsive or attractive. Space is not, doesn't attract us, nor does it repel us. It's it's spacious. It's where everything, all the forces of attraction and repulsion can come and go. All the beautiful, all the ugly. Apply that inwardly. Inwardly, the, just the, with the sound of silence, you, when you're with the sound of silence, it's like you're not, you're no longer dwelling on what's wrong with yourself or what's wrong with somebody or how much you like somebody or don't like somebody or what's wrong with the room or what's wrong with the world. Even though these things might, might uh, arise in your mind, you're no longer obsessing yourself with them because you're abiding more in the silence and spaciousness rather than in the 
conditioned inner listening it's like listening to to the mind it's its own kind of sound And it's because it is monotone, monotonous. It's it's not it's not going to take us into any kind of into anything other than uh, peacefulness. As you as you abide more with the sound of silence, you find yourself feeling calm, peaceful. It's like space. Contemplation of space is peaceful, calming. So these are the, this is the way it is at the present time. At this time and this place is the the body, there's the there's consciousness, there's the breath, there's the sound of silence. And in noting the sound of silence, the more you, you, you say, bring your attention to that, the easier it is to let go of things. Because if you, if you begin to just count to seven, the sound of silence, you'll find you're not hanging on to anything, clinging to even the most powerful emotions and, and uh, memories. And seem to just hang and hold you and keep keep hanging, clinging to you. And no matter where you go, they just kind of go with you. You don't know what to do. How do you get rid of those things? They just hang on the mind all the time. Can't get away from them. But as you sit here, open the mind to the silence, just be patient enough to and stay with the silence, sound of silence. Well, you can't, you can't remember what it was that was bothering you. <laughs> you have to put forth an effort to remember it. I remember uh, developing this practice very much when I came to England the first year in uh, London. <clears throat> there were a lot of problems that had, weren't really just problems of the English Sangha Trust and every, this, any big problems, everything. Everything were problems in those days. The first year was just all problems. So I used to the mind would easily think, would kind of go into resentment about it, not wanting to be bothered with worldly problems or the complications. And the, why did I ever come here? I should have stayed in Thailand. Could have gone off to a nice cave in the mountains, and sit there and listen to the silence, and not have any problems. All these petty little things, people fighting, quarreling, angry things being said, unkind words. Horrible. Why did I ever come here? (laughs) Then, (laughs) Then I noticed that that was suffering, not wanting, regretting, wanting things to be otherwise. So I started just when, whenever the uh, just practicing more and more with the silence. So when they have the committee meeting and tempers started flying, I'd go into the silence. 
and suddenly I just all these 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 uh, strong passionate feelings that are flying around me suddenly I have a perspective on them I'm not getting caught up into the anger and the passions of the people around I'm not just being averse to it or resenting it or being pulled into it suddenly there's a kind of release and a relief from being in a space where you're not being pulled into the problems of the world and the passions of people around you. You can see much better. You begin to see where, what's really the matter. Why people, why people are doing this. Because none of the people were bad. None of the people were kind of evil and wicked and and stupid and heartless people. They were all well-intentioned people. But there was just, so I just noticed that sometimes people talking to each other, they don't really, they're not really communicating. They're coming from different uh, viewpoints. And they, they, they just suspect and, and, uh, and misunderstand each other. It's like, you can see like words going toward a person, but somehow missing them. Somehow there seems to be a lack of communication. Yet, they were all speaking the same language, all English language, all English people. I mean, I am an American, so there are probably a, some problems there. <laughs> But they, but these were all native English people. <laughs> and practicing in this way, one, be, one felt a sense of relief that he, even in the most kind of in the middle of the battlefield or the or the center of conflict, one has a place to abide in that is peaceful. If you don't know this, then of course life is frightening for you because you get yourself into situations where there's conflicts with others and problems and and all kinds of things, You're just, who should, you know, getting, either you've been forced to take sides, or you're trying to get away from it, or you resent it, and so forth, so that it becomes very complicated. Here in uh, monastic life, as more monks and nuns abide in the silence of their minds, the, the problems diminish. The personal problems and community problems diminish. As soon as we get caught up in in views and opinions and personalities and this it seems hopeless. You got forty people living together in a even though this is a spread out kind of place, you do come together and there all have to be decisions made and when not then people people's passions get all stirred up over little things. In the kitchen I hear it's people's passions get stirred up in the kitchen over tiny little things. Or the it's amazing how passions get stirred up over anything and if we and if we don't realize if we don't have any abiding place for that to, to get her out of that we just caught and then we do feel well I can't stand it anymore I've got to get away where I can have some space where I can not be caught up in the passions of problems of people around me so people leave or run away but for those who stay, then the, then the, 
the refuge is in the silence of the mind. As more and more we train ourselves to abide there, then the, the problems diminish. We don't make problems. There's not the eager, egotistical uh, conflicts with others because we begin to let these things fall away in the mind. Now, to, to note the sound of silence is just like listen inwardly, kind of gentle buzzing or ringing in the ears. Reverberating silent sound. I remember watching desire in my mind when I was uh, in the first few years of monastic life, screaming away. It's like like saying, I want to live! Screaming things going on sometimes, carrying on in in powerful ways. And then uh, aversion, a lot of, a lot of hatred and aversion was, was coming up. In the first year of monasticism, I was surprised at how much hatred I was feeling for everything. <laughs> and, uh, I'd always uh, avoided that. My self-image was one of being a kind of kindly and and uh, not 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 hating people this is what I had kind of my image of myself was and then the first uh, year I was surprised how much hatred was coming up in my mind frightening uh, Maybe this is the real me. It's just it's a mind filled with hate. <laughs> Maybe that the, the other was just the fault self, the kind of kindly, loving person was really that was just that was just a, a, a masquerade, a covering this demonic, this terrible demon that was hating everyone. <laughs> Because uh, that's the way it seems, isn't it? The personal, the personal uh, feeling of that emotions bring. But then there's then in that that way of taking it personally, then there's only either indulgence or suppression that you can do with it, isn't it? you just either following it, completely believing it, or trying to get rid of it, get away from it. This way, now, you're learning how to skillfully contain it so that its, its comic force ends in your mind. It ceases. What arises ceases in the mind. 
Now, the, the sound of silence, regard as a sign in the mind, nothing more than a sign, because it is a con- continuous, monotone. It's quite pleasant to be with it once you, once you get used to it. It's peaceful, it's calming, it, uh, and it's a way of, say, letting go letting these things go away, letting the, the strong emotions uh, that you might be feeling, admitting them, you're not, you're not judging them or, or denying them or suppressing them, you're, you're admitting them into consciousness, but you're not following them or rejecting them because they, they can be as they are, the emotional state, the mood, you're totally accepting that, but staying with the sound of silence. So it gives you like an expansion of consciousness where your 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 mind is all embracing rather than picking and choosing. Otherwise we just pick and choose among mental conditions. Rather than than expand to embrace all conditions. Now this might, some people, even though it's present, it's, it's, un, it's unnoticed by most people. Or they think it's, uh, well, when they do notice, they think it's some kind of maybe ear disease. If you, I remember in, when I was 19 years old, I was in the uh, Navy, American Navy, very unhappy. Uh, during the Korean War, very unhappy with it all, and I went to this monastery for a weekend in in Santa Barbara, Anglican uh, monastery up in the mountains. A very beautiful place. And on Sunday afternoon, I was walking out in the hills in the sunshine, and suddenly I heard this this ringing silence. And all this, all that self-consciousness had fallen away. All that, when you're 19 years old, you're so self-conscious. All the fears and, and self-consciousness just seem to dissolve. And there's just this, this incredible peace everywhere, reverberating reverberating peacefulness. Now that happened quite naturally, spontaneously. There wasn't no seeking after it. There were no drugs, no, no, uh, no intention, no, no understanding of mystical experience or meditation or anything like that. Just something that happened. So I didn't understand what it was. I, but I kept thinking... After that, I mean, this is how I'd like to be all the time. Rather than this wretched little creature with all these worries and problems. <laughs> the life is such a, it's so difficult when you're 19, and it's so, it seems like you're, it, there's no way out. You're just stuck in this, in all this views, self views, and fears. It's, I thought that's how it should be. I wonder how how you can get that way because it's, it lasted for quite a while. But then that evening, I had to return to the military base, and all the self conscious fears and that st- immediately started taking over the mind. I felt this. It's like I was being attacked. 
I found myself back where I started, depressed and But I remembered that. I wondered, always wondered what it was. When I asked people, uh, nobody seemed to know. Uh, they, they, I think you maybe went off a bit. <laughs> you know, why would a 19-year-old sailor go off to a monastery anyway? Or a weekend, when you could be having a ball in the bars, in the discos, and all that. They didn't have discos then. In the bars, San Diego, down to Tijuana, Mexico. Sky's the limit for pleasures. He went off to a monastery. (laughs) I think you're cracked, anyway. That's probably what happened. You went went nutty. Mm. Then in, uh, because that was such a powerful awakening experience, but not having any knowledge of what it was, uh, then when I, several years later, I, I started reading about Buddhism and something clicked in my mind. I suddenly, I just, my mind just kind of soared with delight reading about Buddhism. I thought, that's how, that's what you do to get to that place. It'll be that way. You have to, you know, this, this, uh, it just, things began to fall into place in my mind. And that was about, when I was about 21. But in that, is is. In the in the si- sound of silence of the mind, it's, it's not. There's no personal quality in it. It's not. It's there's no person. In other words, it's no not ma- man, male or female, not American or British. It's as it is, isn't it? There's there's, there's expanded consciousness, all all pervading consciousness, silence. Alertness, it's not a trance, you're not in a trance, so that you're, 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 you're not aware of what's happening, you're not, you're not lost in any, any kind of state of mind, and yet it's truly peaceful. So what is that anyway, in, in, uh, as, we, as we examine it? We begin to trust more and more in the silence and emptiness of mind. And abide there because that's where, where things come together, where things, where things are seen properly. But it's not, the attitude cannot be one of just trying to get rid of the world by by the, using the sound of silence, but by noting the sound of silence so that the world can be seen clearly. That's a different attitude, isn't it? We're not, we're not using that as a kind of rejection of the world. You can't stand this thing, go to the sound of silence. But it's, uh, the, the attitude has to be the, the right attitude, right understanding, that all that arises ceases in the mind, so that the the mind is willing to to bear with what has ari- what has arisen, and what and what what ceases.
of, in, a, in a peaceful place like this, England being a very silent country, is, it's very easy, it's much easier uh, to, to note this because uh, uh, Britain is very silent, actually. You've lived in other countries. <laughs> you realize that it, just nature here is, is, uh, tends to be subdued. It's more silent, not so, so vibrant and active. In uh, Thailand, the forests there are, are, have their own, everything's buzzing anyway. There's a kind of continuous buzzing.